Have you ever come back from a beach vacation with these mysterious white patches on your chest or shoulders? They're not itchy, they're not painful, but they refuse to tan. So you try exfoliating, moisturizing, even scrubbing. Nothing works. Sound familiar? You might have what many people call a summer rash or a water rash, but in the medical field, we call it tinea versicolor. Tinea versicola loves sweat, heat, and humidity probably as much as we'll have summer. It is very common in waterfront areas. So here in Cape Cod, we see it at our clinic a lot during the summer months where everybody is at the beach or doing some water-related activities. But what is tinea versicola? Welcome back. I'm Dr. Maria Zizian, a board-certified general surgeon and an IFM-certified functional medicine physician. On this channel, I share health tips on skin health, food and supplements, functional medicine, surgery, and the latest medical research to help you feel your best. And if that sounds good, please like, share with your friends, and subscribe. So, today, I will walk you through what tinea versicolor is, why it happens, and most importantly, how to treat it and prevent it from coming back, from happening again. Tinea versicola is caused by malassezia, which is a yeast that normally lives on our skin. In most people, it stays balanced. But in warm, moist environments, like let's say if you're wearing a sweaty t-shirt, a damp swimsuit, or even if you're just on a tropical vacation, it can overgrow. When that happens, the yeast releases these special acids that interfere with how your skin produces pigment. The result, blotchy, discolored patches that don't match the rest of your skin. Fun fact, it is not contagious, so you didn't really catch it from anyone. It is your own skin flora getting out of balance. Why is it called summer rash or water rash? Well, I mentioned earlier already that Tinea versicolor thrives in warm, moist, and oily environments. And that makes it more common in certain groups of people. Of course, it makes it common in the summer, but also these groups are teenagers and young adults because they have oilier skin. Next, we have athletes and people who sweat a lot. Then we have anyone living in humid climates. And also a big one, people who wear tight clothes or synthetic fabrics that trap moisture. It often gets worse in the summer or after any activity where you sweat and don't dry off quickly. Think hot yoga, long hikes, or lounging in a wet bathing suit. And that's why so many people, so many patients, call it a summer rash or water rash. What does it look like? Tiny versicolor can look very different depending on your skin tone. On lighter skin, it may appear as slightly darker spots or even pinkish patches. On darker skin, it often looks like pale or white spots. The rash may be flat or slightly scaly and often appears on the chest, back, shoulders, neck, and sometimes even the face, but that's not very common, thankfully. And here's the kicker. After treating the infection, the yeast may be gone, but the skin discoloration can linger for weeks or even months. And that's because the pigment cells need time to reset. How is tinea versicolor diagnosed? It is commonly a clinical diagnosis, meaning that appearance alone is enough to diagnose it. However, if the diagnosis is unclear, we can use, for example, a Woods lamp, which makes the affected areas glow uh, sort of yellow green light, or a gentle skin scraping where we look at the yeast under a microscope. These tests confirm the diagnosis and also help us rule out other causes like vitiligo, eczema, or a condition called pateriasis alba. So with diagnosis, then what? What are the treatment options for tinea versicola? The good news, it is treatable. And here's how. The first line is topical treatments. For larger affected areas, we use antifungal shampoos like selenium sulfide, which unfortunately often doesn't work. So a better option is ketoconazole shampoo. And this shampoo is applied to the skin and left for about 10 minutes or so, and then rinsed off. For smaller areas, we often prescribe antifungal creams, uh, like over-the-counter clotrimazole or prescription ketoconazole. They're 
most of them are a good choice. There's also room for oral antifungals, but they are never the first choice. And they're only used for very stubborn or widespread cases or recurrent cases. And I'm also going to repeat myself, but I'm going to say it again, that even if the yeast is cleared, skin discoloration can take time to resolve. So I say to my patients, don't panic if you don't see any, if you don't see instant results. And that brings us to how we look at tinea versicola from the functional medicine standpoint. We look at the root causes of frequent fungal overgrowth, such as consuming too much sugar or refined carbs, which can feed yeast. Another root cause is sweat gland imbalances or hormonal shifts. We also look at impaired skin microbiome or use of harsh soaps disrupt the skin barrier. Ultimately, there is a connection between leaky gut, disbalance of gut microbiome, and skin. So we create functional medicine protocols based on a specific root cause, but of course the key is to get rid of this yeast overgrowth. So finally, what can you do to prevent tinea versicola? If you are prone to getting this every summer, here are my best prevention tips. Shower and dry off quickly after sweating. Wear loose, breathable cotton clothing. Occasionally use antifungal shampoo as a body wash, especially on your back and on your chest. For example, selenium sulfide is great for occasional usage as a prevention if you're prone to tinea but it is often not effective for a full-blown infection. Next, avoid heavy oil-based lotion, especially in the hot weather. And also consider addressing any underlying gut or skin microbiome imbalances if it is a recurring problem. In summary, tinea versicola is harmless, but very frustrating. So if you've been battling strange skin patches that come and go with the seasons, this may be your answer, but as always, please consult with your doctor before starting any treatments. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like skin topics such as today's topic, check out my book, The Clear Skin Diet, Unlocking the Secret Link Between Food Sensitivities and Skin Health. It is about how various foods can affect your skin and cause a variety of skin conditions such as eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, etc., by changing your gut microbiome, immune system, and hormones. It is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. The link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.